Alright guys, Hatch Kramer here again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Lots of big developments going down overnight, but with Optic Kenny officially confirmed just a couple of days ago, he's given his perspective on what might be considered to be the biggest risk with this Optic team going forwards, and that could be the relationship between Kenny and Tashi that wasn't exactly perfect, at least in-game, a few years ago on Optic Gaming Los Angeles. Kenny says though, this time round, there will be no such issues. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I greatly appreciate it. Just some fantastic Black Ops 3 gameplay as well last night for the boys. So, you know, they've done it again. I know that Kenny and Pred are going away for some time now. And I think Pred's already back in Bosnia. So, um, you know, Kenny's off to Japan, isn't he? So, you know, there's not going to be too many of these clips coming out for the coming weeks. So we're going to talk about them while they exist. Before we get into this, though, I wanted to mention this from Clay. A very tactical way for Clay to find his SMG duos. Now, I will say that, um, you know, would Clay tweet this if he wasn't confident he's actually going to be on a team? So, um, it's a very interesting thing for Clay to say. Best sub duo you can make with available players, let's hear them. So he's like, all right, guys, give me roster ideas, which kind of implies that Clay has something lined up, maybe an AR duo alongside him. I know that some people have said Clay and Attach should go somewhere, and we have no idea what Los Angeles Grillers are doing. Of the teams that are left, Surge is probably going to be, well, we'll talk about a boozer later today, but Surge has got Rambo there as the coach. So I'm guessing that Illy's going to be there, and I'm wondering if Hook's going to be there. And I think there's some questions about that. But um, still, they might have their own thing going on. I would say that outside of that, Vegas, Clay ideally doesn't want to play for Vegas again, I imagine. He wants a facility, I would say, I think any player would, and they will decide their team ages away from now, as probably will London and Florida, we still think are doing this whole Spanish thing. So it kind of just leaves LA Grillers as an organisation that might be, you might want to play for. I think Attach will be quite happy to do that, just because, you know, based in LA, that's where he's from. I think he's even been linked to that organisation before. So look, I mentioned it yesterday, could Clay and Attach work as a duo in this current year? I think they could. It might not be my pick of the a bunch but maybe there's a chance that occurs and if that was the case they would need an SMG duo that Clay is now saying look give me the best players that we could potentially put together here even Vanity a um, well former Counter-Strike and most recently Valorant player says me and Hook so you know maybe Hook could get involved there there was also Kennedy said I thought was um you know pretty interesting Clay's response with that you know obviously look Clay knows what he's doing right he's a veteran of the game he probably knows that this tweet's turning up an attach grab video but it is what it is and uh, Kennedy says standing in a seam or standing in Nero because I definitely think that of the players left and I know a lot of people were applying our afro and who can all this but um they might already have plans to go somewhere especially afro does with Los Angeles thieves so they're not really they might be available but they're not really available to our understanding whereas Stanley probably is available and then also a seam I definitely think a seam is worthy of consideration but um clay might have some clay and a seam they had a bit of friction back in the New York subliners days in 2021 and Cold War so maybe they'll try and avoid that but um yeah definitely Stadio I would say and then Nero is another one that I'd be looking at so I quite like what she's gone for there and this is also interesting from Atachi replies and says half the replies are players already on teams so you know obviously a bit of intel there but it is interesting that these two are interacting so intrigued to your perspective on that but it must be said that again we have you know Clay and Stadio playing a lot of Valorant together and despite all the potential questions around that Vegas team last season, especially at the start of this offseason, that they might completely blow it up. Standy, as of yet, doesn't seem like he's found himself on any of these rumoured rosters, so maybe there's a good chance here, and Standy also likes this tweet. So there might be something in that, just wanted to share it for you guys. Unfortunately for a, a player like Pentagram, though, it doesn't seem like he's going to get his chance, and it's really difficult for players like Penta. He's been around for a long time, and has been a top player in challenges for years. He was Thieves' substitute during the Vanguard season, right? And has wanted to get a spot in the CDL and apparently in the conversations that he's tried to have, he gets told that he doesn't have any experience in the CDL and therefore he can't get a job, which is... You know, look, it's the catch-22 that a lot of, um, you know, people experience in real life where you need experience to get said job, but you can't get said job without experience. You guys know how it works. But, um, you know, as he says, like, it's a funny reason to not pick me up year after year. Like, is that not a wild ironic statement? Which is 
true and I feel bad for players that have committed so much of their life to this and it just doesn't seem to they just don't get the break that maybe they deserve or like just the way the league is structured no 16 teams does hinder players like Penta but it's just um you know and you can say oh well you know doing tweets like this doesn't help your cause which it probably doesn't right I know that probably organizations look at Penta and others tweeting stuff like this and think, oh, this guy is just, you know, salty because he's not got a spot. But you can understand why he might be. Does it help his cause, these tweets? Probably not. But at the end of the day, does it really matter? Because it doesn't feel like he's going to seemingly getting many chances anyway. So really difficult story for a lot of these challengers, guys. And we'll probably see quite a few of them, I think, step away this year would be my expectation because I don't think the CDL is going to support its own league much more than it did previously for too much longer so I certainly don't expect there to be any massive improvements in challenges but we'll see in due course couple of civ tweets as well I'm not I actually looked this up to see if it was a song lyric and I'm not actually sure that it is but it might be so I really don't know but I think he's probably just saying this one straight up so I mean like it's a nice tweet with some nice video behind it you would think it from Zid. and there was also this tweet like I can't be I can't believe this guy man it's so funny the way he uses Twitter but um Sky's actually replied to this the other day so just a little bit of Sim and Sky's interaction implying that there might be something happening there and you'd expect the subliners to confirm this in in due course, given that Pred did just straight up leak it on the most recent Optic content. And um, also, a couple of guys are mentioning, I don't know if you think this is, um, there's anything in this at all, but I think that the players used to have, so you know that you get the Twitter verification thing and it can be linked to an affiliate of certain teams. I think they used to be linked to Optic Texas, but now everything has been linked to like the main Optic gaming page, which is a marginal difference, but it kind of implies to some degree and this is a little bit different to what FaZe have because I think their players are affiliated to Atlanta FaZe rather than to FaZe. But um, it just probably shows that there's a little bit more to these guys coming in than just being COD players, right? Because if you're just linked to your affiliation to the Texas team, then you're a COD player. But if you're linked to up to gaming, then you're a player and also, you know, a content creator for the brand. We know how Optic operates, but I thought it was one indication that's what they're trying to do. Kenny in a similar boat, and Kenny also gave some thoughts here on the probably what has been considered the main risk with this Optic team. There's a few, probably a couple of concerns, and they have maybe more issues to dial out and figure out than the other top four teams do. Because FaZe, they're only making a one-man change. Toronto make it a one-man change. New York make it a one-man change. A two-man change will carry extra work, I suppose, to make it work. And some of the questions have been around Kenny and Dashi. I think Dashi was quite clear yesterday that the environment on the team at the end of last season didn't align with the way that he wants to run the team from an accountability from like too many excuses perspective and Kenny is going to bring that level of accountability to the team Dashi's a definitely a different player now than he was I think four years ago when Kenny and Dashi had what Kenny doesn't consider he doesn't say there was beef now there was definitely in game and from a teammate perspective they had friction for sure Kenny doesn't deny that but he says that as individuals as his teammates and like outside of the game there was never any issues and that was the case at the time we discussed it in the first place so Kenny gives his thoughts on what he's going to do for the team and also why this is going to work this time listen I'll address this once again me and Brandon never had beef I just personally had issues with him on how he dealt with the over like that year simple as that we never had beef once again me and Brandon are professionals and we both were super confident in each other going into this year and we'll be good our whole idea is to come to this team and make everything easier for everybody bro as simple as that that's Last thing I'll say about the situation. Can you talk more to yourself, Cod? I know I think it was gas on the play. I mean, uh, without giving out too much, I, just, I mean, I just love teamwork. So, I think if you have four super, super talented players like we have, uh, I think we all individually can take over a game. But why not do it together, you know? Teamwork. And if our teamwork isn't there, then we use our ability, like our talent, to bail us out of situations that probably ain't. You know, the best for us. And I feel like there's ways in Call of Duty to set those up. And uh, that is where my idea of how I look at the game comes to play. I've already, like, me, yeah, obviously, now that I can speak on it, me and the team have already had conversations on what this year looks like for us. And basically, I asked them what they expect out of me and told them what I expect out of them. And, uh, you know, we're on the same page, so... Oh yeah, do is kind of like execute the plan.
it's going to be a good year. So if you guys aren't familiar with this, right, this is the legendary Optic Gaming Los Angeles team. It does, it's so crazy what the CDL was like back then with all this money flooding in from Immortals and all these other ownership groups. Like, they were just, I mean, Seattle spent, what, 300k each on all the players they had for just a terrible team. Another classic Seattle masterclass decision. But um, this was the Optic Gaming Los Angeles team out of nowhere. You can see how happy Dashi looks, by the way, to be part of this team because this was wasn't his intention. He was um, trying to go to Huntsman with the Optic guys, but I don't exactly know if he got, was a bit naive and signed the contract too early or something because Huntsman came in really last minute so that season because Hex, he'd sold Optic and he wanted to do the new thing, partnered with NRG to make the Chicago Huntsman. And I think the Dashi thought that Optic was going to stay under Optic, but it wasn't the case. And he tried to get traded for Gunless and all this stuff went down. Didn't happen though, of course. So he was stuck on this team that, um, well, a couple of these guys, Slasher and, uh, of course, Kenny, formerly of the 100 Thieves roster from the series before. And then next year, right, a lot of these guys still teamed up together again. But Dashi was long gone out of the picture at that point. And I don't think Kenny's mindset towards COD has really changed that much over the last few years. He learned a lot, I'm sure, from Slasher and from from Jacob and from, you know, even more veterans of the game than he is. And Kenny's been around a long time, it feels like, at this point. And even then, he was around for a fair few years. But Kenny and Dashi, they had, you know, they had their issues in the game. But outside of the game, they were still boys. And that was made clear at the time. And Kenny says it's the same story to this day. So he doesn't foresee any issues there. And I think from listening to the game chat episode and stuff like this, there's Dashi's definitely making a lot of strides. And for whatever you think about what he was saying about the team culture, some people were saying, oh, he wasn't talking about ghosty. I'm like, he was talking about Ghosty. I can't really read that another way for what he was talking about yesterday. But even if he wasn't talking about Ghosty specifically with what he said about accountability and excuses, he was certainly talking about the entire, you know, what was going on on the roster, which would then, you know, kind of put himself in the spotlight as well. And Kenny's not going to be happy with any of that. So I think there is going to be a changing of the perspectives because we know how Kenny operates behind the scenes. He is, and Octane said this, that the LA Thieves team would call each other out relentlessly behind the scenes in the practice rooms when they were making mistakes but when they left the room they were boys again right and it absolutely did not affect them at all many teams have the situation where someone makes a mistake somebody calls you out for it and you don't put it past you once you leave the room and it's not always an easy thing to do and probably the vast majority of teams ever don't get that bit right but um and because Kenny and Dashi are good friends I think there's a more likely chance they can actually make that work but I think Dashi still fresh in his mind will probably be when Skump decided to retire and effectively called Dashi out in his retirement video and said, look, you know, I'm falling down so you can rise up. And, you know, because with Scump retiring, Dashi came back in and had that second chance in some sense on Optic as an organization. So he knows that he can't squander it. And, um, you know, I think Dashi's made a lot of strides. So I think it's going to work well. And certainly that's what Kenny seems to think. Just one final thing to close out the video here. JKL came out with who's the most or what is the most underrated COD game of all time. Looking at a few options here, like MW3 from the World at War. And, um, you know, Black Ops 4 is an interesting one because I, Black Ops 3 gets a lot of, or Black Ops 4, sorry, a lot of people look back at that game with a lot of reverence and for good reason, but I don't personally think that it's underrated. I think it's probably quite fairly rated. It was a great game, really fun, but it had its fair share of issues as far as I'm concerned. The stim shot was pretty outrageous, like the way that the game played wasn't always perfect, but it was way better and the meta was way better than what we have today. I actually, can you believe it, agree with Nameless here. And I know that I've said this before and it is a hot take and I'm glad to see someone actually agrees with me on this. That Infinite Warfare, because it was the final jetpack game, was like hated from start to finish. For reasons that in hindsight don't seem fully fair, I think towards the end of the game, the search and destroy was broken in that game, but some of the maps were really good fun. And the hard point played as well as like even going back to Black Ops 2, I think, when the spawns were fixed in the middle part of that game. So yeah, I actually agree with Nameless, can you? Really, but very much enjoyed your perspective in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.